Hi guys, we are back. And like we promised, today we are going to talk about the Umbrella Movement. Without further ado, let's begin. The Umbrella Movement is also known as the Umbrella Revolution or Umbrella Protest, one of the most relevant events in the city's identity formation process. It started on September 26, 2014, when hundreds of students gathered in a courtyard in Hong Kong, demanding for an end to Chinese control over Hong Kong politics. Tens of thousands of Hong Kong residents have occupied major points over all the city, stopping businesses and causing traffic. The major triggering cause of the protests were Beijing's rejection of the previous agreement to grant Hong Kong open elections to the chief executive of 2017 and the Legislative Council by 2020, agreed in the Basic Law in 1984. In August 2014, China decided to change the terms of its agreement and turn it into its own benefit. According to these changes, only previously agreed on and committee elected candidates could run for the post. Politicians who support the mainland's efforts and plans and work for the benefit of the PRC in the city. The protesters moved to the streets under the organization and mobilization of Occupy Central Love and Peace to demand universal suffrage. Their final goal was to end protests only if Beijing changes its electoral guidelines and Leung Chengying, the pro-Beijing chief executive, steps down. The protest took place for almost three months. At the beginning of the revolution, the reactions of the police force triggered responses from the society. The protesters had to protect themselves from the pepper spray and tear gas attacks of the police officials and used umbrellas to do so. This very simple and everyday used object of an Asian person has become the symbol of the revolution and patriotism. The protesters wanted to emphasize the inequality of forces, umbrellas and raise hands against pepper sprays and tear gas. This could also be regarded as a metaphor to the relationship between the PRC and Hong Kong in the first phase of the protest. While mainland Hong Kong pushes for changes and Beijing quite aggressively rejects the changes required by the protesters, Hong Kong keeps on demonstrating peacefully and abides by the law. Not being able to oppose Chinese government, the movement started to fall apart. In December, Occupy Central leaders turned themselves into the police. This symbolically ended the protest. The revolution itself couldn't mobilize society to the extent needed. It proved to be too difficult to unify the people when they are divided on major questions concerning society, due to Hong Kong's unstable identity and lack of unified political course. Hong Kong has not gone through a classical decolonization process that could offer an opportunity to strengthen and define its identity and form social mechanism towards a more efficient model. Since after the end of British rule, China immediately took over the leading role and stalled to form the region's politics to fit the interests of the mainland, splitting up the people into two groups, pro-independence and pro-China. Hong Kong didn't have the time and the chance to carve out full independence to itself. Before the Umbrella Revolution, the level of Hong Kong citizens' consciousness of Hong Kong identity was obscured by different opinions within the society and approximately 150-year history of being separate political entities. At the beginning of Hong Kong's transition into an economic and trade center, the urge to participate in politically related affairs stood at a low level. Despite the British colonial times, Hong Kong citizens didn't feel the need to form an aggressive alternative that counterbalanced Western values. The colonial government didn't impose harsh regulations on Hong Kong citizens. After a handover, the majority of the population couldn't clearly decide if they were either Hong Kongers or Chinese, but believed that they were either Hong Kongers in China or Chinese in Hong Kong. This already puts an obstacle before the conscious formulation of a strong sense of Hong Kong identity that could provide the ideological motivation for a stronger and more strategic civil society movement. The Umbrella Revolution definitely was successful in raising awareness of the society's problems. This action went hand in hand with an increase in the number of those who define themselves as just Hong Kongers and decrease in the number of those who identify themselves as Chinese. However, these changes are not dominant enough to be able to form a majority and express a united will that represents the majority of the people. Hong Kong's identity seemed to play a lesser role during the protests than the economic considerations of the elite and influential part of the society. Multiplicity in Hong Kong citizens' identity seems to cross-cut social identity ambitions for now. 
This can be the legacy of the immigrant culture, Hong Kong citizens' economy-related considerations. The city has been an economic trade hub, which serves as a trademark and offers employment for the majority of the population. Thus, economic considerations majorly influence society. Hong Kong citizens still have a long way to go to form a strong and special identity. They still have to experience common events that train their own sense of belonging to the community and help them decide whether they would like to accept the PRC's decisions or would like to challenge them and demand broader democracy. The Umbrella Revolution is important in this process since it raised not just socioeconomic questions but also unified the community to a certain extent. However, the mainland's influence over the city could break this process into pieces and could end this process of self-realization. Whether Hong Kong will be able to reach its aims and alienate its identity from the mainland is still the question of future studies. That is all for today. We hope you learned something new. See you next time!